Now let's imagine that we want to add a filter pane to our design. For example, a drop down with several options and a date picker to filter from the start dates. We can also add another search bar. So let's insert these controls. Here we have the old controls, the classic ones, but Microsoft is slowly implementing new controls that are called modern controls. Let's enable them because they look nicer and we start getting used with them. So in the properties, I will go to updates and enable modern controls and themes. Okay. Once I enable, it asks to reapply the theme because it just enabled this theme pane. Maybe if I reapply with an app, these controls here may behave a little weird. Let's see what happens or if nothing is going to happen. I don't know, the button is not working at this moment. In the future, I'm sure this will disappear. Let's just dismiss that. So now we have these modern controls here. See, the icons are different. And the old controls are here under classic. By default, we have the modern ones. I'm going to insert a drop down. So I'm going to search drop down. Okay, this is the drop down. Item 1, 2, and 3. Right now, we are not going to work with the formulas that just do the visuals. I'm going to insert a date picker. Here's the date picker. It's not letting me move them. I will just insert the other one and refresh the app to see if that solves. And I'm going to insert a text input. Now we have here text input. Okay. Let me save the app. Okay, now that I exited full screen, it's back, it's working again. Right, I cannot see very well because the background of the screen is white. Let me toggle the properties pane and put gray, or maybe blue. Yes, I'll put this blue right now. Okay, now we want to organize them side by side. But before doing that, I also want to add labels on top of them so I can explain to the user what they mean. For example, here, I would insert a text, but on top of it, I will need to change the text color to white because it's not showing very nice here. So let me go to the font color and select something white. And then font weight, let me put bold. Okay, now I can see better. So let's see, for example, this is, let's say this label would put project. Okay. For the second one, for the date, I'm going to do Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and then I'm going to call this starting date. So I'll just go to the text property and put starting date. In the last one, I'm going to copy and paste and write in the text search description. Okay, so I wanted to do something like this. See, right now I'm not using a container, and that worked. I could just put here and it's fine, but it's better to use container because then I can easily space things in the screen. I can use the gap. I can use those properties that help me align things. But now we are going to insert a horizontal container and add these controls inside the container. Okay, for this container, I'm just going to change the background color. Here in the color, I have the second, after selecting the column, I ha we have the custom tab and we can add some transparency. So we can easily identify where it is. And now if I copy, for example, these two, I'm selecting the two, Ctrl X to cut. And if I paste inside the container, since the container is a horizontal one, everything will appear side by side and I cannot put this label on top of it and I wanted to group those together because they are part of the filter so what we can do now is then with the container selected one option is inserting a vertical container now that we have the vertical container I could just select these two ctrl x to cut and paste inside the vertical container now I can select the horizontal container again and insert another vertical container. 
and selecting again and inserting another vertical container so we have the three containers for the three filters. Now we can see that we have three containers in here. They are stretching to occupy the full width of the parent container because it's in the configurations. If we go to the horizontal container, the container that's the main one, we can add a gap, let's say 16. We can add padding to the top, 16, bottom 16, left 16, and right 16. So we can see better the squares here that represents the vertical container. We can even select the vertical containers here in the tree view and change the background color. Let me put gray. Okay, now we can easily identify where they are. Now let's just select the label here and move to the top because it needs to be above the drop down. So we can just come here to these three dots reorder, move to top. I can then go to the others that are outside. Let's do with the start date, Ctrl X. And then I will paste inside the second container. Again, I'm going to organize the order of the label. And for the last one, same story. Ctrl X, Ctrl V, paste inside the container. Correct, fix the order of the things, reorder, move to top. Okay. Now with these three containers selected, so in the tree view, I can select the three of them, pressing Ctrl and selecting, enabling the panel, I could just make the items stretch horizontally. So now they occupy the full size, the full width of the container. To these containers, I could also add a padding. So let's say 16 to top, bottom, left and right. And I could center it. And they are stretching to occupy the full height of the horizontal container, that's the external one. Instead of that, I could just center them and set a fixed height, let's say 80. Let's see how they appear. Okay, no, I need to put a little more. 100, 10. Great. See, now we have the cards for each filter. And they are very well organized. Now I could, for example, move this filters pane, put whatever I want. I can even decrease its width and we can see that everything is adapting. Well, almost everything, because as we can see, these controls inside didn't adapt to the width. Since I already have some experience with it, I know that the minimum width for these controls is bigger than the width of the parent container. Let's see, for this one, the drop down, it's stretching and we have a minimum width of 320. So let's put 60, for example. Same for the date, changing the minimum width and same for the text input, 60. Same stories for this container. See that this one didn't adapt very well. It has a minimum width of 250. And that's fine. We could have the minimum width and we could also leverage the wrap control of the outside container. For example, we could do wrap. See how it works now. It's very dynamic. If we wanted to transform this into a left pane, since we have the wrap, we just need to decrease the width of the external container. And now this filter pane is here in the left. Very easy to change the configuration of the app. If I want to make it horizontal one, I just change back to this horizontal format. It's very responsive to the width and height of the horizontal container. Okay, let me just style them a little bit better. So I'm just going to make these containers, the vertical containers that have the filter inside with a white background. I missed one. Okay, white background. Let me put the label colors now almost black, a very dark gray. I'm changing the font colors of the texts, the labels. And then for this container that's external, that's holding everything, I can remove the background color and also remove the drop shadow. Now we have a filter pane here. Of course, you can still improve. You can add more things to it. 
Now in the next video, we are going to do another exercise that's creating what would be a delete pop-up using also containers. See you there.